It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 182. This week, something we've wanted to do for a long time. Merlin suggested it. Now we're going to do it. Our Mac Break Weekly All Picks Special. There's an app for that coming up right after this. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 182 for February 23rd, 2010. There's an app for that. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Gazelle. The easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. For a 10% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com slash MacBreak, bonus code MacBreak. And by squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account, go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak. And by... Go to Meeting. Picture yourself on a phone call sharing and explaining something visual with Go to Meeting. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash MacBreak. G-O-T-O meeting.com slash MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 182, a very special Mac Break Weekly. Thanks to Mr. Merlin Mann, who has suggested this. For the last three or four years, and we're finally getting around to do it. Merlin Mann is here from 43folders.com. Hello, Merlin. Hello, friends. How are you? It's nice to see you, Leo. I, I'm, I'm done doing kind of some moody lighting today. I hope that's I like right. it. It's very yellow. Am I honeyed? Do I look like I'm in honey? You're honeyed. Light? You're honeyed. Honey dipped Merlin Mann. That's uh, that's a favorite. Crowd favorite. That's, that's unfortunate. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, your idea was to have uh, us do just all picks because we always do. My the only the show. contribution to this show in the 14 years that I've sometimes been on here, I think, was the addition of the pick of the week, uh, which is uh, my favorite part. I love uh, the yeah. whole reason I'm into this Mac stuff is not because of the numbers and the chip sales. Uh, I just love the applications, and uh, I love. Uh, I just love that there's so many things on the Mac that really make me happy and make my life better. And so I'm, I'm glad we're doing this. I think people, I hope people enjoy this. All right. Oh, can I, can I pimp, can I pimp my little thing here? Pimp your thing. So it's, um, uh, anyway, I'll leave this up after we've recorded this, but merlinman.com slash Mac picks. I'm going to be, people always want to see what's the link for this. What's a screen grab. So, uh, with this extremely loud tactile pro 2.0 keyboard that I use, you'll hear a lot of clacking, but yeah, I'm going to post, uh, so you'll be able to see all this stuff and, uh, I'm sure it'll all go up on MBW. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to figure out a way. We've got a friend feed room going and if people see a pick, uh, not showing up there, please add that to that. Uh, the buzz is uh, started uh, at buzz.com. So we're going to have various ways and by the time the show's over there'll be good show notes with all of this information luckily we have 52 minutes of this stuff already huh yeah you know? yeah our pick masters uh include mr alex Lindsay from the pixelcore.com hello alex hello good to have you here once again good to be here uh also from the chicago sun times everybody's favorite mac journalist andy anako is hello here. so uh, hollywood squares charlie weaver half wave yeah well you're in uh let's see you're in the corner square to block so it's appropriate <laughs> There's no, you know, if we did this right, we'd have a few more. We'd be three by three instead of two by two. <laughs> then we could play tic tac toe with you guys. Ooh. So uh, let's let's kick it off, Merlin. This was your idea. So uh, pick number one goes to Merlin Man. Okay, um, I'm going to start with one that uh, I don't know if I've ever overtly uh, talked about, but I want to toss it out there because it's, it's it's something I've just that's just been an evolving usage for me, which is TextMate. Um, now, I know there's, there's all kinds of religious wars about text editors that go way, way, way back. But um, I used to be a BB Edit guy back in the day. They're all great, right? What, what, even if you're using whatever, VI Emacs or whatever, there's reasons to use all of them. I don't want to just recommend TextMate because that's, you know, kind of dumb. Um, I want to recommend one reason why I like TextMate. Um, so TextMate is a text editor, like any. You don't really need this if all you're going to do is open and type because you've already got text edit, which, by the way, a lot of people don't know text edit will also open a fair number of uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Word files it as does, well. It does, yeah, a, isn't that nice? It's a very robust program. You got, you know, you got Google Documents. So for the basic stuff, you don't really need to buy an app. TextMate, TextMate is the closest thing to, it's got all of the GUI of a good Mac program, 
but it's got a tremendous amount of power under the hood because it works, it's integrated so well um, with really just pretty much any kind of programming language, anything you want to do. So if you like Perl or you like Ruby or you like anything, there are at least dozens and I want to say maybe hundreds of bundles that you can install. And a bundle is like a plugin, but a bundle is something that includes, it's got a language file, uh, it's got a uh, commands file and so on and so forth. Long story short, you can expand the functionality of TextMate by adding these bundles. And if you're just thinking, oh gosh, great, I can, I can build Rails apps that I don't need. No, there's a lot more to it. You can, there's, there's a, you can have a task paper to-do list bundle. You can have, uh, I'll put up a screen grab of my bundles. Uh, you can do stuff like, I'm going to pull mine up real quick. I have a to-do um, list. I use, uh, I use it for, um, in Subversion is a way to share documents yeah. with another writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so, so the first part of it that's amazing is, for example, if you don't like the stock HTML bundle, there's like a really amazing one called Zen HTML that adds a lot more functionality. Now, why would you want all of this stuff? Well, first of all, you get basic stuff like syntax highlighting. So, you know, if you're used to working in an IDE, if you're a coder, you're used to like having a lot of control over what your environment looks like, how you set things up. That alone is pretty cool. You get that anywhere. Um, if you really, 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 really know Perl or something, you could do all this on your own. But for most of us who are kind of like a power user, let's say, I'm not exactly a, I don't know Perl to save my life. I love the fact that somebody else can build this bundle. I can grab it off of GitHub or where else, wherever else, toss it at TextMate, and now I've got stuff like what? You can edit your mail.app messages from inside of here. You can post via XML RPC to your blog from in here. Uh, there's Git, GitHub, Gist, uh, you can post to Flickr from in here. Like Unix itself, it is, as they say, small pieces loosely joined. All these things work together. Beyond the syntax highlighting, you get things like snippets. I use snippets so, all the time. For instance, there's some stuff that yes. I type into my wiki a lot. And yes. this just does it all for me automatically. It's really fantastic. And, and if you're used to Text Expander, for example, which is I probably should come up today because Text Expander on the iPhone That's will awesome. change your game. Yeah. Um, Text Expander is, is great, but I think Text Expander mostly explodes based on things like spaces. So you, at the end of the word, you type a space. Right. TextMate takes all of this to another level. I don't want to get too nerdy, but the way TextMate gets really powerful and where people don't really always see why it's great is through something called Scope. And Scope is just a way of saying that different things happen in different contexts based on what you might need. So in one context, if you type, for example, let's say, uh, control command W, uh, that might be, that might pull up something uh, that lets you post your blog. It might pull up something. It all depends on where you are. So in some cases, for example, you'll only get, see certain commands pop up if you're inside a meta tag in the head of an HTML document. You're not going to see everything you can do. You're only going to see the stuff that's contextually necessary inside of there. You've also got things like languages. You've got an ability to tweak this. Um, I, it's, this is less educational than hopefully to excite you. I want you to just have a look at this. Uh, it's very much worth the money. I think it's, I, I don't know, I want to say like 40 bucks, but I'm not sure. 55. Uh, 55, and I, it's easily some of the best money I've ever spent. You can post your Tumblr, shell scripts. There's this one dude that blows my mind. This guy, his name on, on um, GitHub is, is Subtle Gradient. And he's, he's a tremendous nerd that has written some of the most amazing bundle stuff I've ever seen, including stuff like you can iterate, like if you've got a row of data and you're in block editing mode, you can iterate everything by 10 or 20. He's written all these amazing things, I think mostly in Perl. Anyway, just have a look at it. And so, so here's a couple quick ones for you that I really will specifically recommend. Markdown and multi-markdown. I live in I live in multi markdown. Love markdown. I haven't used multi markdown. How's that? Multi markdown, different? much to Gruber's chagrin and much to my joy, adds footnotes, references, <laughs> glossary. Uh. I'm writing my I'm writing my book in uh, in in multi markdown. Um, another one uh, not to miss is kind of a meta tip, which is one called Get Bundles, and that's a bundle that keeps your bundles updated without having to get into GitHub ah, if you nice. want to do that. You basically choose which one of these you want, which repository, and it pulls it down for you. TextMate, it's at macromates.com. And uh, I love it a lot. Highly recommended. Very, very well worth the money. Alex Lindsay, you are next. So I have a new one. Yay! New one we've not seen before. Not one that, and, and one that I hadn't seen until a couple weeks ago, and I and I saw it go by, and I and um, and I've been noodling with it. And so here's the here's the background: is that uh, you know I used to DJ, and DJing you know has some challenges. Yeah. Getting beat mixes right and getting all the stuff kind of moving. You want to make a good party mix and you want to mix a bunch of things. And all these songs all come. Evidently, they do not all work at 120 beats per minute. 
Mm-mm. As much as you'd like them to. You they, wish you, they would. You want them all to be at 120 beats, but some are 113 and some are 123. And you want to make cool mixes. And it's something that I always wanted in iTunes is it's great for iTunes has kind of a stupid crossfade. You know, like it just does a crossfade from one to the other. Uh, and it, you know, it doesn't matter what it is and, and it doesn't do it to the beat and it doesn't pay attention to any of those things. And you, and you want to have something that's a little bit more intelligent. And uh, so anyway... So I saw this application go by, and it's it's pretty nifty. It's called Mixmeister Express. <laughs> Mixmeister. Mixmeister. And uh, Mixmeister Express is uh, it's it, there's Mixmeister is a it, there's a whole suite of products. So, so this is the little one. There's Mixmeister Studio, and there is Mixmeister Fusion, and Mixmeister Fusion Plus Video. And these are the, those are like pro apps. Uh, when you hear this is the kind of software. I'm not saying this is always the software that they use. But this is the kind of software you'd hear for like remixes that you'd see on a CD, you know, the dance remixes and so on and so forth where you can add stuff in. And what it does, what the pro ones do that has, you know, also uh, gotten into the Mixmeister Express is that they, of course, do all the beat mixing for you so that they match the beats. So you, you can crossfade two songs and it just it blends the next, you know, and it slowly brings one from the what it was to the, to what it is now. And, and all the things that we used to do on, you know, <laughs> that used to take a lot of skill, uh, doesn't, you know, you know, now it's just like, oh, we just add them in. And, and it's incredible. You, you, can, you can import your entire iTunes library and you watch it just work through the BPM. And it's sitting there just calculating all the BPMs for all your songs. So it, it has the, you know, it figures out what the How BPMs are. How would it know? Are. That's pretty well, impressive. Well, you, you, you're, you're sitting there. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. One way to do it is, a, is um, you do a uh, low-pass filter. So you do a low pass filter where you grab only the boop, boop, boop. You know, like you can right. isolate the boop, boop, and then you count that, and then you figure it out per minute, and then you put it in. So anyway, the um, I don't know how they're doing it, but that's one way to do it. Anyway, they get the BPM, and so you have all of the BPMs for your, uh, your songs already figured out. And then as you add them, it'll simply drop, and you can say, like, I want to beat mix eight, and it'll simply drop, you know... Um, you know, over there, and you can you can snap to measure, you can snap to beat, you can snap to you know. So it really it figures out what all those things are for you. Uh, and as I said, this is this is kind of a pro DJ kind of thing to do. But now it's something that you can do if if you really want to make that great mix. Uh, and if you're like me, you know, it's it's great to have a, a playlist. But like when I'm having a little barbecue, I really want I want all because I used to do DJ. I want all the songs to blend together. I want them all to kind of create a tapestry of music in the background. And and uh, so this is my kind of application. So anyway, uh-huh. it's sixty nine bucks, and um, it is. Uh, so you're saying it really doesn't make it a beautiful mix. Well, it makes it easy for you to make a beautiful mix. Right. You know, and, and and then you can export it out to you know you know to, you can burn it burn a CD from the application, or you can export out you know, to iTunes. And so um, those are the, you know, it, it just makes it quick and easy to kind of put put all that stuff together. So anyway, that's it. There you go. There you Mixed have it. Mixmeister Express. Meister. And it, it is Mixmeister.com. Andy Anatko, your first pick of the day. My first pick of the weekday and year uh, is the Logitech Squeezebox. Uh, Squeezebox is an old and venerable name. Logitech bought it about a few years ago. Uh, and I think it's one of the two great ways to use your iTunes library throughout the rest of the house. Uh, one way is to buy yourself a $99 airport uh, express modem uh, a, a, a base station and plug in a pair of speakers and use your, your iPhone you know, remote control app to access your library uh, and change the, you know, change the playlist, change the tracks. The other way is the Logitech Squeezebox radio system. Uh, it is what looks like like a very cool like little console like tabletop radio but it has wi-fi built in it can you it can connect to uh any machine you've got inside your entire house running either mac or windows that's also running a special little uh, invisible squeeze box server app that does nothing but wait for requests from this radio to have it serve content uh it's very very slick anything that's inside your itunes library including smart playlists will be very very easy to access uh throughout the through the on-screen control uh in and of itself, it can also do things like it, it can connect to Pandora Radio, Last FM, Rhapsody, all these other really cool services, uh, and it's it, it's the it's the smartest way to access your library without having without feeling as though you are doing sort of a semi kludgy sort of thing to find your remote server and connect to it and, and control it control it. It really does feel as though you just have this cool little desktop tabletop radio that can connect to every song and every podcast and every internet radio station that you ever access. Uh, it's maybe not the most appropriate solution for something like your living room, but uh, for something like I I, I have uh, uh, their not their cheapest model, but their second cheapest model uh, in the bathroom. 
and that's what I listen to when I'm shaving, brushing my teeth, and showering and stuff. And the, the I mean, the cool thing about it is that it would be very, very easy for me to simply start a piece of music playing or start like a podcast uh, playing uh, from my notebook. Uh, in one part of the house and then go in and just do my morning ablutions. Uh, but it's another thing to suddenly decide that, you know what, I'm really not interested in this track. I think I, would, I just want the next one. Or I suddenly I want to listen to this audio book that I, was, that I downloaded a couple days ago. And you can just simply reach up, you know, turn the dial just like you're tuning a radio. Uh, it has a very, very, it has a color, the, uh, the squeeze box radio model, which is the cheapest one, 199 has a color screen, a really cool iPod-ish interface it makes it very very easy to navigate and access and you just make a make a difference change make a selection and it's up and running uh, 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 in in just seconds so that's i it's i didn't really get it at first i think it was because i was trying to use it as an office radio and i realized that why the hell do i want an office radio i've got the computer, got the computer right here right. but but when you're looking for something for the kitchen when you're looking for something in the bathroom one of those rooms where you're not likely to have a computer handy when you need it it really is a slick slick solution it's not that much more expensive than buying an extra airport express uh and it's just a much much slicker solution 199 bucks at the start it supports mediafly which means it would support our broadcasts as well you get all the, the twit stuff on there that speaker yep. sounds and pretty good you think Sounds very, very good. Uh, yeah. I have the, the, the tabletop version of stereo with a lot of nice bass. I think this, the airport, excuse me, the squeeze box radio from 199 That's the small is just, one. just it's smaller and it's mono, it's, it's a mono uh, but I believe it has a good amount of bass. If you want to improve things, it also has a headphone jack, so you can plug in a good pair of like, you know, cheap pair of 30 $40. So you have the boom. I have the boom. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not, uh, it doesn't have the color screen, but it has, it's the first model that Logitech right. came out with. That's uh, 300, has, yeah. That's, and that's 300 bucks, but yeah. it's a much better experience. It's sort, of, it's sort of like what the iPod Hi-Fi would have been if, <laughs> if, any other, if any company other than Apple had developed it. Does it do Receiva? Receiva.com? I don't know if it does. I'm, so I'm not aware of it. This is a website that uh, internet radios um, support. Uh, I have a couple of internet. I love internet radios. I love the whole idea. I'm pretty sure Logitech does support this. this so you go to this site. It has a directory of 14,000 internet radio stations. It's the largest directory I know of. You create an account. You can create a, a station list, which you then can send to the radio. So that the rate it's right. much easier to find stations. If you're listening to internet radio, much easier to find stations. But like you, I end up listening to Pan it must, Pandora. It, must, it's, it probably has something similar to that because sure right in the right in the website, there's a wizard that says if you if you want to listen to like an actual radio station, type in the call letters here. Right. We'll tell you whether it's whether it's uh, whether it's available uh, it's by nice streaming. Feature. Yeah. So for instance, yeah. So for instance, I just checked to see if it has WBOS like a good good station here in Boston. Of course, it is available in Squeezebox, uh, and you can just easily. Tune into it right with this box right here. It has alarm clock, has all these other cool stuff. So it, <laughs> think about the money you're wasting on those fifteen dollar alarm clocks that you've got on the side on your bedside. It's, it'll pay for itself in just well a couple of years. But. So I thought we might do ten of these. I don't think we're <laughs> like going to do ten. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even done four. We've done three, um, but we have more to come. I'm going to do mine. Uh, actually, this is kind of a follow up on uh, yours. I was going to do it a little later on, but since you mentioned the squeeze box. This is a wonderful solution if you want to get that you said for the living room to go one step higher. The Sonos Zone Player S5. Um, this is such a cool player. First of all, these speakers sound really good. Sonos, very much like the Squeeze folks, uh, pioneered kind of this Wi-Fi radio idea. This is not an iPod dock. It is a standalone. In fact, it looks just like a speaker. The, plugs, the only wire on it is it plugs into the wall. It has a, a volume and a mutes button, and that's it. You can buy one or as many as you want. Each of them will then bond to your Wi-Fi. They can see your iTunes collection, but they can also see all of those things that uh, the this, this Slingbox plays, the you know, the Rhapsody, the Last FM, the Slacker. Uh, I play Pandora on it all the time. It does internet radio as well, so I can hear all my local stations on it. And it has an incredible iPhone interface, which will be oh even better on the iPad. I can't wait to uh, see this on the iPad. Lounging on the on the couch. Yeah. So it allows you to control it through the iPhone. I can actually show it to you. Uh, I have it on my iPhone here. Well, we won't see much because I don't have a zone a zone player here. I uh, I ended up buying. They're two ninety nine each. The quality is so good. I ended up buying uh, one for the living room, one for the kitchen, and one for the bedroom. It's become our uh, bedroom radio Hi, too. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Here's and Lindsay. Let years, her tell I've you all about it. I'm sorry. Music lovers. Just all pot Lindsay down. Uh, but she's. This is a demo that's on the site that allows you to see how it works. It really. This is the iPhone app, and it's just spectacular. 
uh, allows you to search for radio stations, and then they play through it. You can have separate zones, so each player can have its own separate music. So as many players as you have is how many different stations. So you can have something different in the kitchen, something in the living room. Uh, but you can also uh, have them all play the same thing if it's party time. So that's very handy. How much See, is this? Two ninety nine per. They also have for is that, is that the, for the S five. Yeah, the S five zone player S five. Sure, it's not three ninety nine. Maybe it's three ninety nine. You're yeah. probably right. It's three ninety nine. Thank you for correcting me. Um, they have a little device, smaller device. Maybe that's the one ninety nine that uh, attaches to your Wi fi, and that's what I actually uh, use. I attach that to the Wi fi. Um, and uh, that's if you have a stereo, so you can hook a stereo up to it as well. It is the sound qualities. Do you have these, uh, Andy? Uh, I've tried Listen. them out. I, I think they're they're a little high end for my taste, but you're right. They're very they're very pricey. High quality. <laughs> they're pricey. Yeah. It's like a stereo system. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's like buying a tuner amplifier. Uh, but they're, they're, I mean, they're, there are two different kinds of markets for these. There are people like me for whom, you know, they're we're not. If you're not really an auto audiophile, you just want really good. A, a really good sound quality without feeling as though you've got you're live at BudoCon. Uh, but for people who want that extra experience, there'll always be companies like Sonos to to fill the void. Right. This is. I just. I'm. I just. Uh, you're right. This is for somebody who wants. Basically, you know, this is for the person who, in years past, would have had to wire the house. You know, yeah. to have separate zones in the house and the very elaborate, very expensive systems. My, and now, basically, for three, my grandfather had speaker wires. Yeah, that yeah. Ran through the, the entire house. the entire house and all got back to this the. This is all wireless. Little, yeah. Sound quality is superb. These speakers, as small as they are, sound really good. We had a dance party and uh, people were dancing to it. So in uh, many yeah. rooms, huh? You had a dance party in many rooms. You could. You could. You I wanted. had actually different programming in each room. It was our Christmas party. You were there. And so I had dancing in one room. I didn't go to I had any Christmas rooms. music in the other room. Was, I I it was great. I got and to the front and I just had the cheese. The cheese was good too. S O N O S dot com. The Zone Player S5. It's. It, I'm, I'm going to have to get a couple, I think. Come over and listen. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to check yeah, it out. Yeah, it, it, it's the, the iPhone app exactly, puts it over the top. I mean, it's just incredible. I have to say that this is exactly the kind of thing that I've been looking at. You know, and 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 just imagine with my with the Mixmeister software, you could you could, you could, you could make your own mixes. <laughs> if we could only get TextMate to work with this, we'd have a theme here. <laughs> Where's the TextMate hook? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to probably be done. Probably somebody will make one by the time we're done. So uh, we're going to uh, take a break, come back with more of your picks in just a little bit. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. But I want to introduce a brand new sponsor to the show, and I'm really glad to have them. And it's something that I think will fill a need that a lot of our listeners may have. You have gadgets you no longer use? Gazelle is the solution. I'm very excited about this. We're gonna, I've actually been going around the studio today collecting stuff. So here's like a, a Nokia. Let's try it. A Nokia uh, N93i that I no longer use. They take smartphones, MP3 players, laptops, gaming consoles, even old movies. We know you all have gadgets that you are just, you know, dying to get rid of. If you go to gazelle.com slash MacBreak, you can find out how much Gazelle will pay you for it. They even send you a postpage box. You don't have to worry about listing it on, you know, eBay or anything like that. Just go to go gazelle.com. Here it is. Gazelle.com slash MacBreak. And then I'm going to enter in the gadget here. It's a Nokia. And they'll tell you exactly how much they'll pay you for it. N93i. There it is. Search. They send you a shipping box, and they send you a check. Does it make a call successfully? Yes. Is it free of water damage? Yes. Overall condition? Perfect. I have the AC adapter, the rechargeable battery, the original software CD, and the original cables. They even show you a graph of the price of this as time has gone by. <laughs> now they calculate the offer, and they're going to send me a check for $101. Gee, that's awesome. <laughs> I am very happy. This well, has been they, lying around gonna, the they're office. Just gonna, they're just going to send you that check. Yeah, well, first I have to send it to them. I'm just, uh, uh, so I press the it. button, add it to the box. Assuming that it's good. Yeah, as soon as I didn't lie about it, I'm adding it to my box. Uh, they pay for shipping. You want to sell another one? What, what? You got anything you want to sell? I want you all to try this now. This right, this I, is so cool. G a z e double l e dot com. It's a marketplace, so you can watch the rates go up and down. So you can say, ah, I'm going to wait. I see the value is going up. And then they'll just send you a check. Yeah, if they once you accept their offer, you enter your mailing oh. address. Gazelle sends you a box to send it in, and in most cases, they pay postage. Now that may be U.S. only, so you should check. So the wait time. Um, you select the payment 
you want. You can get a PayPal check, an Amazon or a Walmart gift card. If you use Amazon gift card, they bonus at 5%. There is so much stuff in my house that I can do this <laughs> I'll tell you, I just made another <laughs> five bucks. Now, here's the other thing that I really like, and I actually really praise them for this. They can also donate it to a charity. In fact, if you are a charity, a little league team, or, or you're, you know, you're trying to raise money, this is a solution that you can use. You can fund a cause, turn your gadget, gadgets into cash for a cause. So you set up a personalized gadget drive web page. The donors, you tell all the donors, go to Gazelle. Here's our page. And, uh, and the, they'll send the dollars to your cause. It's so cool. iPhone's about 400 bucks. MacBook's about 600 bucks. You have to check current rates, of course. Um, Round up all your used gadgets. Go to gazelle.com slash MacBreak. So it's, by the it's way, like an on, online uh, pawn shop without yeah, the pawning. Without the pawning. You and, get, and with you a box. And with a box. <laughs> for a 10%, I want to tell you like one it. more thing. For a 10% bonus, an additional 10% on the value, use the code MacBreak. Oh, gazelle.com slash MacBreak. So this solves the e-waste problem. Um, this is really good. And by the way. I'm going to start combing the office. If there's recycling, they also help you do the recycling. They have like uh, fund a whole little party, a, a, a little Pixelcore party. I know. Think office, of the money. G a z e l l e. dot com slash MacBreak. We're really glad to have them on board. Will be like airy, great sponsor. Light kit. <laughs> I feel I feel really happy about these guys. Yeah, I I, I like them a lot because it's every it's a win for everybody. So we're really glad to have them on the show. All right, let's see who did the last one. Me. So it's your turn, Mr. Merlin Mann, for your pick of the week, sir. Hi, everybody. This is my second pick. <laughs> second. I think my hair fell down. Um, all right. This is uh, two that we've definitely done before, but I want to talk to you about a use case that's really cool. Uh, I want to talk about the combination of expand drive uh, plus Skitch uh, plus whatever you use for hosting. Um, right now, uh, well, let's start, let me just quickly go over what these, these two are. We, every, all, probably everybody knows these, but I, I just want to make sure you know what you can do with this stuff. Expand Drive and Skitch. First of all, Expand Drive, uh, which is at expanddrive.com slash Mac, uh, is something that, let's be honest, should be built into the Finder. Expand Drive lets you bring up uh, basically FTP sites, SSH, logins. Uh, if you got if you got a web server running on your Chumby, you can pull that up. You name it, anything anything you can SSH. By the way, that's my pretty Chumby fun. does not have a oh Chumby. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. A dot to no, no, go no. the dot to hit lance that off. If you're gonna go, can I just say, Leah, if you're gonna go into your Chubby, you're gonna want an extremely secure socket. That's that's SSH one. SSH one, baby. Uh, so expand drive is this thing though, and again, this is one of those things that once you see it, it's like the first time I used Transmit, the, the wonderful FTP app. Okay. I was like, why is this not everywhere? This makes right. so much sense. If you have, in, like in my case, I'm on a lot of different shared hosts, dedicated hosts. I've got a lot of things out there. I've got to either SSH into or SFTP into, um, and expand drive basically mounts that um, on your desktop because it treats it like any other mountable drive. So basically, if you've got what if you're, you're on Pair.com, you're on in my case Libsyn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not doing the podcast stuff like I used to, but now every time I want to post something, I just toss it into my Libsyn folder and I created an expand drive shortcut that prepends the name of the file with the path to it. So it, wherever I go, I can just type and all of a sudden I'm just dropping stuff in and it goes anywhere I want. Now, now to me where this gets a little sexier is where you also, so first of all, you're going to need a host to do this trick. But it's pretty great to have a host that's got a lot of capacity and doesn't meter on their bandwidth like Libsyn does. Um, but it well, doesn't Well, they support S3, so you can always use S3. Could be S3. You know, the S3 is so squirrely with permissions. I don't understand uh, why they can't yeah, figure out right. how to make permissions easier to deal with. But um, so, so just, you know, again, just substitute Libsyn with the name of whatever you use that's SFTP-able. But I just got to tell you, it is so much easier to know that you can just drag something into the equivalent of a folder and it's online. Uh, of course, there's you know there's half a dozen ways you could do this. You could also do this with uh, something like Dropbox. Dropbox has not pinged me on bandwidth yet, but I would not surprise be surprised if they did. Uh, I would be careful really? if you throw in public. Well, it says right on the right on the tin. You know, we reserve the right to blah 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 oh, blah. I didn't know that. In your, if you're serving something out of your public folder, I mean that's going to put a hurting on them. Yeah, that might. So, yeah, because we but we use we use Dropbox to send gigabyte files all the time to our partners, daily, our podcast, but, but not public. So we're yeah, it's not public. That, but yeah. Yeah. Open up, hosting service. But, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, if they yeah. open up like you know ten thousand HTTP streams, that's going to be a lot. You're going to get some um, attention. 
Yeah. You're going to get some attention. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, whatever you use. But here's where it gets sexy, in my opinion. Uh, you keep saying skit. it's going to get sexy. I keep waiting. Shut Come up. On. I rock. Uh, <laughs> Means he's going to strip, Leo. <laughs> Skitch. Get him off the screenshot. Maybe he's really nude right now. How are you going to tie this in with Skitch? I don't get it. Here it comes. Finish. You mind he's like, would you just let me finish? <laughs> Uh, Skitch lets you do screen grabs. Everybody knows that. It's super cool. And you we may even Skitch. know in that little lower right-hand corner where it says web post, you could post it to Flickr. You could post it to your FTP site. Right. You could post it to Skitch's hosting service. This is right. all pretty great. I do As that. I'll demonstrate on my site in just a second, though, my favorite use of it is to combine it with, in this case, Libsyn for me, or it could be any other server. Basically, I enter my credentials for my hosting site inside of here, and I can very easily take a screen grab, hit it, boom, put it up. I'll do it right now just for fun. Uh, let's You're see. Kidding. You're kidding. You're going to do this right now to merlinman.com slash Matt Break Picks? <laughs> okay, so here's me. Uh, <laughs> is it, it's actually not Mac Break Picks. It's, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's Mac, Mac, Mac Picks. I Mac Picks. Okay, so I just did that. I'm hitting web post. Yeah, Mac Picks. Da, 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 okay, so da, he's he's been working. Yeah. Boy, you've been working. But, look at all this stuff you've been posting. Jeez. Yeah, look at me typing. Look at and then typing. I put that in. And Any minute now, this will refresh. So, oh, this is going to be way too big for the, but just to get the effect here. Okay, and then all I got to do is go and drop this in. And dun, 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 dun. so, what you're saying, use uh, expand drive instead of Skitch. I am for, forever posting screen grabs. It's something I'm always putting on, on, my, on my site on Kung Fu Grip. I'm always putting stuff somewhere. Whoa, that's a little oversized. Uh, but it's up. <laughs> that's you see what, what she I just said. did? I'm it's sorry. Now up. I couldn't so, it's, it's, so, let, me, let me clarify something. Is this a utility for using your existing like FTP servers and, and, uh, and file sharing services? Or is it a service in and of itself? Uh, the, 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 the tip that I'm offering is if you have a service that, especially if it doesn't need her uh, in the way that, that most do, it's nice to have a notional junk drawer where you can just throw stuff. Ideally, having your own hosted junk drawer is the best because obviously if you ever decide to, you know, go with somebody different, you know, you're not going to be screwed with all of your old URL. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk by doing that. Um, but what I love about this, I've said this before, I think Skitch was a pick of mine a long time ago. Love Skitch. It's really... It's become the lingua franca for, for communicating visually, right? Whether it's you're doing funny macros or whatever it is you're doing. You can go reload and it should work now. Um, it just makes it what I'm having that area where you can throw this stuff and then having a really easy workflow for getting anything online without what used to be a huge pain in the butt. Used to be you had to go to the command line and get in all, all this stuff. Uh, I really like the idea of having a junk drawer where you can throw this stuff. Both Expand Drive and Skitch are affordances for throwing stuff on the web very quickly. And I got to tell you, once you get in that habit of hitting that web post button so quickly in Skitch, you're never going to look back. You know, the days of having to have, um, you know, a dedicated like fetch or something open, those days are over. Is this your desktop? <laughs> Uh, that's my desktop, and there's my. Uh, Look how clean screen. it is. Look how clean his desktop is. Yeah. Wow. Surprise, right? Wow. It's just us but, uh, and them. Uh, Expand Drive. Uh, I think it's a terrific. I think it's a. It's it, Expand Drive by itself is great. Sketch by itself is great. Uh, I just like this. I got to tell you, increasingly, as I've moved away from the productivity porn stuff as as a primary interest, it's becoming clearer to me that if you can figure out these low friction ways to join together little bits of functionality, everything gets so much easier. Yeah. So, so this basically mounts, it's like an iDisk, except that you can have it point anywhere. Is that it? You mean expand drive? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 so maybe not, not so, if, so if, I, if I understand it, what expand drive does, is it essentially gives all the, re, all, the, all the features of a real FTP server, uh, FTP client app into the finder. So, I, so if I point it, if I install expand drive and I point it to like, say like my web server, I won't right. have to like use transmit or, or, or Archie or something like that. I can just simply it's, double click on it. Yeah, it's the using folder. Mac Fuse. Right. So I don't know. know. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, Mac Fuse is, is the basis for it. And if, you, if you're a ah. Mac Fuse nerd, uh, you could you can string this together on your own. Um, it, it's just that it, it's what I like about it, like Dropbox. Dropbox is kind of something that anybody could make if they had five years to put it together. Right. It's just that it's so polished right. and easy to use. Expand Drive for me, if you, to me, this is the heart of a good Mac app is I don't want to have to make my right. own catch up. Also, this reconnect, unlike FTP, it reconnects automatically. So it's basically, it's like a it mounts, drive. It mounts it, log in. Yeah. Um, so so basically when you log in, you can, you can uh, back to my Mac. Let's say you want to, just a quick way to get to your Mac at home. This will come up automatically and you don't have to deal with iDisk. So, it's, so but, it's yeah, pretty but you, you could theoretically do this with iDisk, but you don't you don't want to. Um, it's not very much I storage. Not great, I have not historically had great luck with iDisk uh, and dependability. Yeah. Okay. 
but that's it's probably pilot error. But <laughs> no, I think it's it's, it's, it's not expensive. Uh, it's like twenty bucks. They have a or a, they have maybe it's a little more than that. They have a, a windy yeah. Windows version, forty dollars. It's just still like I don't understand what's going on. Chris Pearson, you're out of your freaking mind. He's he doesn't charge still for not it. Charging for sketch. Yeah. This is um, oh, what's the name of his wonderful company that I always forget. They do the comic. They do that that awesome comic Plask, application. P L A S Q. No, I think um, Sketch is on its own now. Is it? Oh, is it really? Um, you know, but the, the, the Keith tip Lang, side of Keith the tip. Lang, Keith Lang does it. I love it so it's much. It's so great. I, I, the tip it, inside of the tip is to revisit these things and really, instead of just looking at it as porn that you have fun with for a couple minutes, think about how you can potentially alter your workflow just a little bit to remove friction. Go into the preferences, learn what's new, learn what's there, and then just really work it. Like, my workflow is like is getting like just simpler and simpler all the time, and it's a good feeling. It's a really good feeling. Yeah. Sketch, sketch is a blogger's dream. I mean, if you're a blogger, having Sketch is so fantastic. Well, and it's just, it's really, you know, the, the interface is just so well thought out. You know, it's not just another like, oh, we can kind of grab something. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, I have it on all my systems. Yeah. Is it free? No, you pay for the application, but the ser the storage is free. Or it's do you, free. I don't, I don't. Sketch is free get, too? Oh, I'm sorry, for ExpandDrive? ExpandDrive is not sketch. free. ExpandDrive is 40 bucks. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Sketch is, to my knowledge, still I don't know if they're still calling it beta, but last time I checked, I mean, everybody's like, come on, let me pay for this. I yeah. want this to be here forever. Yeah, so um, cool. It does not, I don't think it works with S3. I wish it did. Expand Drive um, does. It says it does. Expand Drive does, but I don't think Sketch Oh, does. I see. You well, I just um, use their nice storage. Now? Their storage is free, right? Sketch is storage. Oh, yeah, 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 Sketch. And that's insane. It makes no yeah, sense at all. Yeah. And now what's neat is uh, well, the other nice thing with this, and sorry to, to be all over the place, but WordPress now... Um, I'm not doing so much with WordPress anymore, but when I did Inbox Zero, I installed, uh, there's a plugin you can get for WordPress now that will work with S3. So if you want to get out of that ghetto of being stuck on your shared server somewhere, it's really easy to have all your graphics and all your thumbnails and everything actually go onto your own S3, which is not too costly if you're just kind of like a middling level blogger. S3 does get expensive at scale, but oh, it's, it's yeah. not too bad. It, 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 it everybody's like, up. oh, S3 is so cheap. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, start using it. For who? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> All right, good. We're gonna uh, we're gonna add two then to uh, your list, Mr. Merlin Man. You've got Skitch and Expand Drive, so you're pulling ahead. But Alex Lindsay's not far behind with his sit up straight pick of okay, 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 the one. moment. I got one. I got one. I got one. All right. So I needed a new. I, I know that you know this is really more of a, a Merlin pick, except that he's picked many of these, and and uh, but I needed something specific. I need to, I need to be able to take notes, and and here's why. Here's what I needed to do is I was walking around through. Uh, PMA yesterday. So this was or the last two days, uh, the, the photo uh, photographic marketing association. So it's like the Mac world of photos. And I needed to prep all my shows. And what I wanted to be able to do is take pictures of the of what I was interested in covering, and then write some notes. You know, you know, I like this part. I like this part. I like this part. I didn't want Evernote because I didn't I, the, this the connection was spotty. You know, so I just really? I, I wanted it to be uh, mm -hmm. I wanted it to all be local. I just wanted everything uh, to live on my iPhone. Okay. I didn't want it to go to a web page. I right. didn't want to try to connect to anything. I just wanted to, uh, you know, my the, you know, in a, in a convention center, the Wi-Fi and the three G is a mess. So, um, so I just and I just wanted it to be fast. And I found, you know, there's an app for that. Evidently, mm -hmm. um, it's called Photo Note, and uh, Photo Note is simple. It is not complicated. It doesn't do a lot of things. What it does is I can take a picture. And I can type a note. I can put it into categories of, of things that I want to do. I can mail that note to myself if I want to send it out. Uh, you know, I didn't really need to do that for what I was doing. I just needed to stack them up somewhere. And it was just, uh, it was, um, it made a huge difference. To give you an idea, I mean, usually, you know, it's an all-day process. And I might shoot 15 or 20 episodes. And we shot 27 episodes in like three hours. And the reason was is because of this, <laughs> this application. Me sitting there being able to take pictures for a day and really, you know, type in what I was interested in, why I thought it was important, what I was going to want to say when I, when the camera came back up, um, you know, and it, and I, it just, it, I couldn't have any overhead. I couldn't have it be complicated. I couldn't have it right. do anything else. So that's your teleprompter you got in your hand there. It was. Well, I, I looked down at it. You know, I, I looked right. down at it for a second. I go, okay, I'm ready. And then we, you know, we'd record it, and then I look down again, and and I and I used it to build a map. We built a map, and I took notes and organized it. But it was. But it just it didn't. I didn't want it to do anything more than what this was doing. And Evernote and a lot of other ones do a lot of great things, and they do more than I needed for uh, for what I was doing. So anyway, Photo Note is my my next pick. Photo Note, you know, it's ninety nine cents or something. It's like 
a dollar, dollar, two dollars or something. Now, I have to say, Evernote does now have offline syncing. You can sync all I, your notes. All up. I know is, here's the thing, is I downloaded Evernote, and I started, you know, it was one of those I things. I don't know like why. I, I keep getting this position that I'm defending Evernote. I banged on it. <laughs> it, it what happened was is that I'm, I have to admit that I'm pretty picky about, like, when I'm in a rush to try to figure something out, I, I, I open up the application, and if I can't figure out how, to, how I'm going to do what I need to do with it, especially, like, for a note-taking application, if I can't figure it out in 60 seconds, I'm really like, okay, I'm right. going to move on to the next one. Because right. I downloaded, like, four of them. And then, and then Photonote was the first one that I just opened up and I went, oh, yeah, 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 this does exactly what I need. There were a couple other ones. Evernote probably does a better job at a lot of things, but this one I figured out super fast and I was walking around taking pictures and it saved my little butt. It's for photographers. And I Evernote's, really don't think Evernote's they should one of those. Evernote's one of those apps. I, I like it a lot. It's, 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 it's grown in a way that did not go the direction that I needed it to go, but I, I would highly recommend it to people to try because it's just a terrific app. Uh, and what's, what's neat about it, though, is, it, well, neat or a downside is like Devin Think, for example, it's really more of a lifestyle. Than yeah. a right. Devin Think is way beyond me, yeah. so I understand what I feel you're that, I feel that way now about notational velocity, which I probably should really? show, too. I, man, I, 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 if I got to do anything with real, like adding tags and stuff, no question, TextMate, because... I mean, TextMate does stuff like you select something and then hit a bracket and it puts it in brackets without you having to type it. Like it's an editor's dream. But but you, I, all I'm trying to say is that for all of these apps, again, with workflow, you've got to find, like Alex says, um, some right. of these are worth learning, but a lot of them really are like, stop what you're doing for six months to like learn how to use this. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't find that with Evernote. I really don't. No, I'm just, sorry to mean to apply that. It's a great, it is a great app. It's just not kind of for me. But it's, you just what, don't, what have, you just don't have an Evernote shaped well, hole in your heart. And what I would say is that <laughs> apparently not is that I had a very, very, very specific need that I needed it to fill, and this filled it perfectly. Uh, the um, this is from Bananas Design. Yeah. Take What's your favorite use case for Evernote, uh, Leo? I'm just curious because I, 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 the iPhone app. Supposedly, I was talking to Alex the other day, the wonderful uh, d one of the uh, kind of evangelists for the app. I think that's his role. But yeah, yeah. What's the, your favorite use case? What's your favorite use case for? Well, there's almost an infinite uh, number of use cases. I can give you a few. I'm, uh, I'm yesterday buying Bordeaux in the. Um, at Costco, they have a new shipment of Bordeaux in our Novara uh, Costco. They say, hello, Costco is having a new shipment and, and a box opening. So we had about eight <laughs> bottles of Bordeaux Chef and Bordeaux. we tested one and I took, <laughs> so what I did is I take a picture of the label in Evernote. Right. We make some notes about what we thought of it. Evernote, by the way, does do text to, uh, I mean, picture to text, which is very handy. Um, I've done that before with a menu item. If I want to remember a menu item, I've, I do it all the time. For instance, I have uh, serial numbers on the back of the disc that came with my new Nick software. Though I bought all the Nick collection right. for uh, Aperture. They're all in the back there. There's like eight serial numbers. I take a picture of it. It's now in my Evernote yeah. and uh, transcribed. Yeah. Uh, if I park, I take a picture of where I parked so I can find it again. I can record audio as well as Definitely text, as well as picture. And it's it, your lifestyle. It's all lifestyle. Keep all my serial numbers and passwords in it encrypted. Mm -hmm. um, it is the ultimate notebook. And because it works on the iPhone, also on the Android, so I don't, you know, I use two phones, right. mostly the uh, Nexus One, but it's on the Nexus One. It's on the iPhone. It's on my Mac. It's on my Windows PC. It's all synced. It's all synced. It's also available on the web at any time. Right. Uh, the new iPhone update s downloads and stores the notes if you ask it to on your, so if you're disconnected, your notes are still yeah. there. And when you're taking notes, it'll, it'll store them locally? Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. And then upload them as, as possible. Right, okay. So it does everything that that photo note does, I think. I mean, you could take a picture and it stays in there. Uh, plus, it does text transcription. I'm sorry. Why do I keep getting in this position of defending <laughs> no, no, Evernote? But, you know, but you're right. It's a, good, it's a good app. You know what else is great about it is it remembers where you captured it. It does. It puts geographic like, location in. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, did you ever notice that there's a smart group or whatever they call it where you can say, uh, show me, like you can say, like, show me everything. You know, so basically it's got this way of whittling down based right. on what tax. It's you got, uh, unlike show Yojimbo, they have folders, which is something that always bugged me that Rich just refused to put folders in Yojimbo. <laughs> yeah. Yojimbo, the, 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 the bare bones guys are <laughs> kind of adamant sometimes. They just said, but, no, um, folders are a bad idea. You should, it's too hierarchical, so you can't do it. Out of scope, it. out of scope. I but have you can, saved um, searches. Say, I, as you said, you have attributes. So well, you show, can, show me like by location. You can even yeah. say you can say things like show me by location. And then you know I gotta tell you, Leo. I, I know, and Alex, if you hear this, you, you probably will because you, you follow these things. Uh, the thing that would get me to look at Evernote again for one use case is if the text that it captured from photos, which is like magic, if that was captured into something besides a search field. Right now, it's only searchable. It's not exposed as right. text. No, that's you know exactly I mean? right. Yep. 
that that would be huge. Like I took a we were at wine. We went to I'd say speaking of wine, we were in Noe Valley. We go out to dinner. We had this really good wine. It had a funny label. It said Peter Sellers is the name of the vineyard. So I took a picture of it. <laughs> See, and, I would uh, say in the past, oh, I'll remember that, and then I get home and I'd say. Uh, Richard Burton. Uh, yeah, you will not. How how many pieces of paper do you have in your house with seven digits exactly. on? Exactly. No. Exactly. So I mean, this is really really handy. Anyway, that's not. Gonna, I guess that'll be my pick. <laughs> since <laughs> since you did Photo Note, which is a ninety nine cent application for the iPhone, I'll do Evernote, which is free go. everywhere. Although you can do Evernote Pro, which gives you more storage, faster updates, and so forth. So I think it's worth taking a look at all of these. I I have practically every Note application on there. Right. Because I, I, I'm looking at all of them. I put Simple Note on there because you recommended it, Merlin, for the syncing. And I think that's, you know, for that, that's very handy. Um, but I'm just, I, to me, Evernote is just such a winner. Uh, if you don't have Evernote, you should really be looking at it anyway. All right, we're going to take a break. We are doing our picks. This is fun. Yeah. We are now 12 down and only uh, 38 to go. 28 to go. Oh, we're al almost home. I don't think we're getting. We're, we're in good shape because the lightning round is coming up. Yeah, we are going to do a lightning round. <laughs> yeah, Next, lightning. You know what? Next round, lightning round. Lightning round. What do you right. say? No, no, I, I think I didn't get to do a big like mouthy offy pick. Come on, don't start the lightning round before. Wait a minute, did we, we skip we, you? We skipped Andy. Yeah, oh, well, Andy, do your mouthy know. offy. Do your mouthy and he's got, offy. And he's, and he's, he's, he's got a different hat on, so he's a little bit more you know edgy about it. He's got his Yankees hat. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, Mr. House of Ruth Bill, what do you got? Well, let's see. You know, that's so mean. And it's just that's like low. That's I, I, I'm I'm rendered speechless, but I shall soldier on. As if as a Red Sox fan, I'm 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 used to suffering for a while and then simply putting it past me for the purposes of 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 of, of commerce. Well done. Anyway. Sir. Uh, let's see, because I'm, I'm going, th I'm going through all my tabs here, trying to figure out which one to, which one to pick, because I know we're, we're, we're running short. No, 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 um, don't, don't. Uh, oh, well, I see. Yeah, oh, the, I, 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 I do I got, prioritize. I two, I, yes. Okay, I got, I got two more, two long ones to do, but I'll do, I'll do one that's one is a, one is an oldie but a goodie that I, that I like talking about. I'll go with one I have, one I haven't recommended before because I've started my, my, my favorite iPhone game. Uh, is now a drawing program called Layers. No, it's not a game. It is a drawing program. Um, I love the fact that a really good creative app for the iPhone, by virtue of the fact that the iPhone is always with me and it's so easy to use, allows me to be creative during those times of th those those short moments where you just have five or ten minutes to fill uh, and you can either you can listen to music you can read something you can consume media or you can create something uh, layers is a terrific drawing program that works the way that a lot of the other iPhone drawing pro programs do you get tool palettes you get you can draw on the screen do all that kind of <laughs> cool stuff Layers is cool because, as the name implies, it lets you draw in layers. So what I keep doing is that I'll just be taking. I'll, if, I'll I'll be. I was in Copley Square the other day, and I, it was like 45 minutes before my train home, and so I just took a picture of the John Hancock Tower uh, in Trinity Church, and I just simply sat on that bench in front of the Boston Public Library and started drawing on top of it and coloring in parts of the building and drawing in people who were a little dog that was on the sidewalk in front of there. Each one giving it to its to its own little layer, and before long just by simply tracing over the photo that I had taken. I had this really, really cool little piece of artwork. Uh, or you can do cool things like uh, 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 erase parts of buildings and like make, you know, take a, take funny pictures of other people in, who look like they're maybe attacking the building like Godzilla, <laughs> put that in another layer, then reorder the layers so that it looks like they're coming in from the sea. Uh, it really allows you to do a lot of really cool, fun things that only occurred to you at the time because you have a half hour until your train arrives. Uh, it has some uh, slick extra features. It also works with Photoshop so that if you export it as a Photoshop file, it will export and it will uh, retain your layer information so you can take this and then keep building upon it uh, when you get back to your MacBook or your desktop. Um, I'm not sure how good it is as a serious drawing tool, but Again, as a way to fill that those twenty minutes that you have, and feel as and be be done, but, but just be noodling away at something, and only when you're done do you realize that wow, I actually have something on my iPhone right now that's really cool that didn't exist there twenty minutes ago. Uh, it pays for itself pretty pretty quickly. So there there are other drawing uh, apps on the iPhone. In fact, Steve showed uh, one on the iPad. Is this the one he showed on the iPad? Is this the one that was done that the New Yorker cover was done in? No, I think I think that was that's a program called Brushes, which Brushes, is the that's famous, right. famous, famous like artist type program. And if you just and that's that's also another good pick if you just if for for just I want to do a little bit bit of drawing or even better, 
I've taken a picture of something, I want to draw a note on it before I send it on to someplace else so they know what I'm talking about. That me, me I'm at this building over here. When you get out when you get off the train, go go to this big tower right here. Uh, that's very handy for that sort of stuff. What I like about layers is that it makes it a lot easier if you're not very good as an artist, uh, because it allows you to uh, keep the if you if you if you want to enhance an existing photo, it lets you keep that photo intact on a on a on a on a rearward layer and just draw on top of it. And then when you screw it up, you can just simply erase the stuff that that uh, that you add, and you still have the what what was behind perfectly good. Or you know, you you do some drawing on one part of it. That's great. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to start a brand new layer so that whatever I do after this won't screw up the good part that I just created. Uh, if you if you have very little talent or very few guts, uh, it's a very very safe uh, drawing program to play with. Another good one in that in that same vein is uh, Sketchbook Sp Sketchbook Mobile from Autodesk. They took like they had a sketchbook application that was a application that was for uh, you know the desktop, and they basically kind of squeezed it into uh, uh, the iPhone, and it's an experiment from, on their part, but it's 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 done really well. So yeah. it's not, not, there's not some good stuff. It's game. amazing what they're doing for that. It's a lot of fun, and it's going to be so much fun with the with the iPad. You know, it's like, you know, I I uh, I asked someone at Autodesk. I was like, so wait. are you gonna are you gonna uh, make sketch? What, what what are you doing for the iPad with Sketchbook? Uh, mobile and they're like we can neither confirm yeah, or deny yeah, yeah, anything yeah, yeah, but of yeah. course they're like that the, the big smile yeah, like we yeah, can't yeah. wait <laughs> so but yeah, they didn't <laughs> didn't say anything but said enough it's pretty this pretty this is a very sweet application i have to say i'm looking liking this layers is what you can do with it is pretty cool all right let us uh and mine was evernote i went out of order and i and i added another one when no one was looking yeah he's sneak <laughs> He's a sneak picker. That's how I do it. You're a sneak picker. Ash. I know your type. Ash. Well, you snuck the Evernote in, so I. Well, I did that in order, but I didn't really. Oh, I had true. to. I had to. I had to defend Evernote against the onslaught. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's quickly get uh, our lightning round ready, folks, and we are going to move on. But before we do, I do want to mention our friends at Squarespace.com. This really is a Mac pick in some ways. I mean, Squarespace is such a great place to bring your website. Not a, not blogging software. It's really. Uh, we, it kind of at pains to say this is really a hosting plus software content management system that makes it easy to do any kind anybody, of website. It's, anybody, it's crazy. Yeah. It's totally crazy. Are you? Are you, uh, Merlin? Are you? Uh, you were no, talking. No, that page them? that you're reloading is on Squarespace. Is it? You know, it's, it's funny because we brought Gazelle down with the last ad, but but uh, MerlinMan.com. You can't take it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All those those five or six people looking. Around. No, everybody's going. It's the same people are going to Mac Picks as are going to the. Uh, Gazelle, There's like I mean, this horde watching that, you know, the, the, the horde of live viewers that just the, the, the simply attack every site that we talk about. You can't bring it down. It's, good, it's a good test. Peter Sellers. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so this is Squarespace. Now, see, I would have never known because this looks just like, say, a WordPress blog. I mean, it's a very, you chose a very simple template and you yeah. didn't dress it up much. And I don't see anywhere where it says Squarespace, which, by the way, is another nice thing about Squarespace. You don't have to announce to the world you're using Squarespace, but you'll know because... Even when the site that gets mentioned on Mac Break Weekly and 2,000 live viewers go there, it's look how fast it loads. Well, and like, you know, okay, so first of all, I, I, again, now that we're all worried about disclosure, I must disclose that they're giving me a free account. But like, holy crap. I mean, this is another step uh, away from the days when you had to learn Perl and Apache to have a website, right? right. It used to be like you really had, and like this is... At this point to me, there's like very little ramp up. And yet, like, let's give you an example. Okay, all I've got to do... Okay, like go reload the site. You're kidding. You've already changed the site? He's, well, like just go, go reload it. He's changed the site, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Yeah, it looks just like Google Buzz. Oh, no, that's not it. Wait, hang on. Did it not work? I thought I uh, changed the template. Um, I'm not very good at this stuff. Oh, switch templates, that's why. Uh, but no, they've got all these great little templates already built in. All your stuff is populated. You don't have to learn about WordPress hooks. And nothing against WordPress. It's just that that's the bane of my existence. But like anyway, so go and reload now. And you it was too much read. trouble. Like WordPress and all the other ones were just too much trouble for me. And now I sit there. This I talk so with, awesome. uh, with Carolyn, who, who works on the site with me, and the two of us can be sitting on Skype talking about it and making look, changes. <laughs> he changed it all. <laughs> yeah, you like that? <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, but well, that's let's try, let's try another one. Here, here we go. This one's really pretty. Let's do this one. See, the oh, other thing, of course, is once you, now these are stock templates, but then you can drag and drop the borders yeah. and everything. Well, this is where it gets sexy, and this is something that uh, try reloading it again. I'm a little more girly again. now. Again, all right, he's made it more girly. Wait a minute, let's do a <laughs> let's do a hard but reload. What I love about it is that you can override anything. Like if you want, you can go in and say, "Hey, I oh, why did that work?" 
Uh, you can go in and make it whatever you want. If you want to go disable all of the style sheets, you can do that. Right. Uh, anyway, I don't CSS mean to speak is supported. Things, uh, JavaScript is supported. Some great tools for uh, measuring uh, your your traffic. Incredible stats tools. The best iPhone app for blogging ever oh my written. Gosh. Yeah. Just spectacular. Really? I mean, I can go on and on. Look, try it free uh, right now. Go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak. And you'll get 10% off if you decide to buy. It starts at $8 a month. It's very affordable. It really, I, I, this is the place to go, even if you just like, like, want to do your first website. Because it includes the hosting, includes the domain, includes... And, and it works with XML RPC. I mean, you can, you can oh, set it up. It's so if it's the buzzword notional compliant. bomb, yeah. you can give a copy of Mars Edit or Ecto, and they're good to go. They, they don't ever have to touch the code, which is, I think, a nice plus. Yeah. Squarespace.com slash MacBreak. We thank them so much for their support of our show, MacBreak Weekly. And uh, they're doing something really nice for Twit, which I don't know if I should say yet. But they're being very generous to us. Not website. We are. I'm going to move the Tech Guy website over to Squarespace. I finally decided I'm, I, I give up. <laughs> I've been fighting it. I've been fighting it. But they just can't run on a wiki anymore. Um, they're going to give us some office space in New York for the what the new the new show, which I haven't really Ooh, announced yet. New show. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, you're busy, Leo. Well, we want to do a show. I'm, I'll say it now. We want to do a morning show. Oh, that's such a, I wanted to do that with You Look Nice today. I'm so jealous. That's such a good well, idea. Well, you could do it. But we'd love to be part of that. Let's. Do, <sighs> that's the point is what, we're all... So what's the, what's well, the who has... A, who, you know... Leo, I can't see... I, I just want an addition because I'm, I'm capable of, like, saying interesting things by holding a coffee cup, <laughs> cup just for like this, and then saying... <laughs> So, what was it like working with Nick Nolte? Hey, Andy, Andy, how was your uh, Andy? How was your weekend? Did you get a chance to see that stuff that was going on? I'm telling you, Congress. See, I got called oh, that, that, that kind of morning show. show. There, state capital. I was. So what I, about that social light and her antics? What about that? Uh, I was thinking it yes, would be. She's very wealthy. It would. It would be that, but it would be uh, intelligent. So it was oh, kind of just crazy. It's kind talk. of crazy, yeah. I know, and and kind of geeky. It'd be about geek stuff as well, you know. Because people get up. I get up in the morning. I look at Twitter. I look at Buzz. I look at Friend Feed, play. Facebook. I want to see what what did I miss? What's going on? What are my friends talking about? We want to. Yeah, of course, you're all going to play. I hope. Yeah. Who's, and, who's, and, you know, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm nearby. I can do with over. Or we're, another famous We're person? looking desperately for a famous host. Now, it doesn't have to be famous, but somebody. It's all going to depend on who can carry it. I'll probably move out to New York for a month just to get it started. Mm -hmm. Um. But we want to do Monday. This is why it's going to be hard. We're going to do Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 oh a.m. East Coast time. Repeat it on the West Coast. That's why it has to be on the East Coast, 6 to 9 uh, East Coast time. And the point is that we are on every portable platform now. We're as good as radio because you're, we're on every phone, on every, you know, anywhere you want to be. So you can wake up to us, take a shower with us on your, on your, on your squeeze box. Uh, oh. You can get... <laughs> Whoa, a shower on the Leo squeeze Laporte, box. Shower squeeze box. Nice. <laughs> you know what? We could do a special section. You know, uh -huh. it's it's 7.33. It's shower time. Everyone it's go take a shower. Squeeze box shower time with Andy hey, and Ico. Right? Right? Go out and squeeze her. Shower box. Hey, come on, everybody. Andy, if we yes. could Skype to you and you're, you're naked from the waist up in the shower and you do a bit, <laughs> I think that'd be fantastic. We'll, we'll have a PayPal account and the more money comes in, the more I redress. There you go. They pay. Like they pay you to get thousand dollars. I'll be up like this. You see the potential here. You see what I, I'm saying. I, I, it's there. You see what I'm saying. And we've it's already a got. To print money. It is My a gosh. license to print money. We've already got two sponsors very interested in it. Um, and Squarespace. They, this came up because Squarespace. We asked Squarespace. If they moved into a or they're moving into a new facility and they have got a long lease on their old one. And I said, well, we'd love to have a little that studio awesome. in there. We'll give you square. You know, be the Squarespace Morning Show if you want. Right. Um, and uh, so that's, yeah. And so, I think being in New York is good because there's a lot of talent out there on the East Coast, I hear. Mm. You could do it. You could do it in London and it'd be like the middle of the, it'll be the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah. No, it won't. It's the other way around. No, in London, it would be like the middle oh, of the day for them. Be, they, they, yeah. they, they, they could, they, you could do that. It'd be two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it'd be the London the midday show for them. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they take, I don't think they take showers in the morning anyway in, in England. Do they? Mm. It's too cold. I'm going to stay away from that one. Let us move on. It is now our lightning round. Okay. Wow. So you're going to get, uh, I'm, I'm not going to do a timer. By the way, we had a sound effect set up for if anybody duplicated, and nobody so far has duplicated. I keep waiting because that's We have a very divergent. <laughs> We're waiting for the duplicate. Let's start with Merlin Man lightning round time, Merlin. Okay, this is something I love. This is not specific to Max, but I think it's amazing. Can, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is an SD card. Yes. It's a four gigabyte SD card, which first of all is kind of amazing to me. It's called the SanDisk Ultra 2. Um, and I'll tell you why I love it. I learned about this from my pal, Nevin Mergen, who works over at the wonderful Panic. What I love about it is it 
flips and turns into a USB drive mountable Sick. thing. All you got to do is turn the card and it exposes a little thing that lets you pop it right into your USB drive without a adapter. Should I do that again? Yes. Okay, you got an SD card. <laughs> no, That's great. no, it's the lightning round. We got it. Thank you, Merlin Man. You and now, about these? is that an old one? That's yeah, not it's actually uh, it's, it's been out for really two years. Bad. It's okay, no big deal. Oh my! God. I saw it at PMA two years ago in Florida. Actually, have you guys seen this Quicksilver program? <laughs> no, that's a really good one. The thing is, picks about picks, uh, it doesn't have to be new because everybody, uh, there's always gaps. I don't, you know, a lot of people didn't know about that, Merlin. Don't feel bad. Uh, it's pretty cheap, too. It's like 20 bucks. Yeah, four gigs. Have you seen that? I can't wait. I've got it on order, pre order. The new i Fi X2 Pro. I know. Four it's, gigs. Yeah. Or is it eight? I think it's eight gigs. Eight gigs. It does raw, yeah. finally. Well, is it, that's good and bad. That fills up a lot of time. I mean, you know, it's... I, well, if you're on Wi-Fi, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, it's built in Wi-Fi into this SD card. Yeah. I can't wait. You know what I mean? Uh, really, really exciting. Merlin, you changed your template row. back already. I love uh, this. I did. It's you know what's funny? It updated it automatically. I didn't have to refresh it. The page Yeah. Is oh, yeah. I, you know, I did that thing. I had an auto-refresh, that douchey thing where you have an auto-refresh. Like, that's hey, look so at me. Slick. I'm Nick Denton. Blah. <laughs> but, uh, more pages, that's more often. Talks. That's actually... That's how he talks, so... So, but that, I was going to do that as a pick, but it, I was hoping it would be out by now, but it is not yet. iFi X2 Pro, watch for it carefully. Uh, that is going to be a... They, they were showing it at um, Macworld. And that Coming is soon. Be, uh, yeah, any day now. Uh, what else is it? Uh, it's Class 6, read and write, which they need because the early wi fis are really slow. slow. Yeah. Wi-Fi is really slow. Alex Lindsay, your lightning pick. Uh, my lightning pick is uh, many people are, ask us how we back up all those video files. How we, do you back up all those video files? We put them on raw drives. So we don't, we don't actually have, have enclosures for the drives. We just put them on raw drives. We put them in little... So we use... The, and we have little tape cases that we get uh, from Webatech. And we put them in there and we store them like tapes. And uh, uh, we put them on two different drives so we have backups. But anyway, it's a lot cheaper than actually having a, an enclosure for stuff you just want to put into the shelf and put away somewhere. Uh, but one of the things you need is a way to hook, you know, read that drive. And the one that we use all over the office is the newer technology Voyager Q. And so the Voyager Q will, um, it is a, it's a great little slot. It has eSATA, USB, FireWire. Uh, so it has all the connections. You can connect it to any computer. If you get the eSATA, it's about as fast as being an internal drive. If you, uh, uh, otherwise it'll be a little slower based on the, on however you're connecting it. Um, but you just, you just drop the drive in the top and you read away and then you, um, and you write, read, write and so on and so forth. But if you're, if you need to do a lot of backup, the newer technology Voyager Q is the key to the whole operation or at least one of them. And and don't forget the best part of it. They decided to be to be smart and realize that this is almost there's almost no point in developing this unless we have a lever up at the front so that you can eject this thing like it's a slice of toast coming out of a toaster. It's awesome. It's so, like, it's lever you just go hey, and when, when you're done with it, you, you run mounted as usual, but you have to press down this toaster style lever, go chunk, so yep. it pops out and disconnects, and then you can pull it out like a pop tart. And I, I like as much as the actual features of the thing, which are in themselves very awesome. Unfortunately, it does not cook the drive most of the time. It, it, I, be, I bet if you put like one of them sausage patties inside there, because <laughs> the nice be like the interfaces, there's at least five volts there. So <laughs> you can get them nice and warm, I'm guessing. So tell me the but, full but, name again so I can add this to our show It is the notes. newer technology Voyager Q. Q-U-E or? No, no, just Q. I see it. Here we go. Okay, newer tech Voyager Quad interface, Firewire. I like big. I like big hard drives. Well, and it's just great because you just you just back the stuff up and you uh, and and this was a secret that I was talking to an editor and I was like, how do you de how do you deal with it? We're trying to figure this out. And, and he said, oh, we just put them on raw drives. And and we have I mean then we have like two hundred. We just got cases for a hundred of them, and we're still going through because we we just had them in static wrap until a week ago. And I think we have like two hundred raw drives full of. You see that rack gear? There you go. See. Now the other the other little quick pick on this on this blazing pick is the Webatech is the only one that really makes a good case for those. They, they look like tape cases. It's a Webatech, but it's a because I have like what twenty or thirty uh, hard drives just sitting up there. Yeah, so you need to get gathering little, dust little cases in their little mylar you put, you bags. Put them in the little cases, and then you stick them up there, and they just look like cassette decks. They look like cassettes, and then you just pull them out as you need them. And the Anaco, your pick, please. I'll get back to the lightning. Uh, I love uh, locations. Uh, from CodeHackers.net because it solves a basic, basic problem. I need to have my my MacBook configured differently depending on what network I'm on. When I'm on my home network, it's Wild Wild West. 
contact, open up all the ports, con uh, connect to all the services. That's great. When I'm at the coffee shop with a Wi-Fi, I still want to be able to access certain services, but I sort of trust the location. So something's on, something's off. When I'm at Macworld or a trade show, I assume that everybody out there is out to get me. And so I want to turn off all my file sharing, turn off all my music sharing, uh, uh, and all that other sort of stuff. Co uh, locations lets you it will take a snapshot of where you are in terms of what what the network looks like what servers are present and uses that to let you define what do you want this thing to do whenever you wake up your macbook and it discovers it's on this network and it can do some really sophisticated things not just turning on and off file services or closing ports but also things like as soon as I get to the office, uh, immediately, immediately mute the volume, uh, close down this application, open up this uh, this contact manager document, uh, connect to this server, uh, lock my system keychain. There's a whole list of things like on, on the fact page that uh, of what you can do. You, you can even do things like as soon as you re as soon as you recognize that you're on your co your company's network, automatically run this Apple script or this automator workflow. So if the first thing you want to do is check in on a whole bunch of different projects. The simple fact that you've lifted the lid uh, of your MacBook and then simply gone off to get some coffee means that by the time you come back, about 10 minutes worth of stupid file dragging and emails and, and status updates have already been done for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Very, very slick. And you can multiple. And also, uh, what I also like is that it also has a setting for when I'm, what happens when you're on a net, when the MacBook is uh, is on a network that it does not recognize. So you can say you can uh, you can set up a state that simply says if I've not told you about this network, assume the worst, <laughs> and make sure you do not expose anything that I do not want to have exposed. Automatically uh, set the screensaver to lock. To do all kinds of really cool things. Uh, it's very very flexible, not very expensive, and it's it saves me so much random clicking and dragging and setting changes every and time. Impossible trauma. Impossible exactly. trauma. I've yeah. I've left I've left notes on people's uh, desktops. In airports, <laughs> going. I'm on your desktop. I just want you to know that you're wide open. And I left this note on your desktop. If I had been a hacker or anyone with anything else, this would have gotten a whole lot worse. You should probably try to think about locking it down. <laughs> I got uh, two quick picks uh, for you. They're both iPhone apps. Oh, Merlin, you're on my camera five. You're killing me here. I don't know what's going on with my hair. I <laughs> stop it. Oh, well, my for, camera five is all squeezed. I can't show you the iPhone app, so I'm just going to have to mention. Uh, the two of them. One is I can't stop playing. Is words with friends. You like Scrabble? I you like love to play. Scrabble. You like to play Scrabble. Don't play this. Don't get this game on your iPhone because I'm, you'll I'm be playing already, Scrabble I'm, I'm like crazy. I'm deinstalling Plants and Zombies as it is. Yeah, Plants and Zombies is. Just I, mean, I have to get it off the yeah. iPhone because it's words with friends and chess with friends are from the same company. They uh, they they both of them. They're from New Toy. I think they're ninety nine cents mm -hmm. each. They let you play over the network. Scrabble, a Scrabble-like game because Hasbro owns Scrabble, yeah. so they changed the rules a there little bit. There is a bit. Scrabble, isn't there a Scrabble? There for probably the is, but this one is just so cool because it's networked. Just does a great job. I have five games going at once, mm -hmm. um, and so you're never at a loss for Scrabble action. <laughs> 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 and then, and then chess with friends is is another spectacular way to find good chess players. Because the truth is, both Scrabble and chess are the kinds of games that computers don't play well. Actually, they play Scrabble, and it's no fun if you're not playing with somebody who's at the right level. It's right. no fun. The problem with Scrabble is the computer can play perfect Scrabble, and uh, that's not good. So I prefer not to play Scrabble against computers. Uh, and I and chess, actually, it's kind of the same thing. The computer can beat you every time if it's good enough. So um, this way you get to play real humans, and, and they play like humans. And you're right, Merlin. I don't, I, if somebody whomps me, I don't play right. Scrabble with them again. Especially it's, Scrabble, like yeah. Well, also like people don't know like how to leverage the dictionary. Like I don't. Like I would never play Hodgman because he plays it like ten times right. a day. You know, right. yeah. I you want to play somebody who's like you. Mm -hmm. you so yeah. you, want, you want to play somebody who just wants to have fun while drinking coffee with each other, as opposed to the ones exactly. who just or somehow are t is turning Scrabble into macho posturing. Which if is somebody knows cool. that QI and ZA are words, I don't want to play with them. <laughs> what? That's I, like that's like the intro to Scrabble. I know. That's I have, like, oh I my know. god! That's, you could have. How could you, you have Squidgybo right there? Seven <laughs> left. I can't believe you didn't know that. And I'm then uh, one more I'm going to mention is a uh, SMS app called WhatsApp. This uses uh, your uh, 3G or Wi-Fi connection to do SMS. It adds, uh, you, you know, it looks for people who are in your contact list, adds them automatically. Uh, they, if they have an iPhone, you can talk back and forth with them. I think it's a BlackBerry version as well. But it's more than SMS because it's very easy text uh, uh, audio. So you could say something and it goes in the SMS. Uh, pictures or video as well. So it's a very, it's a rich media kind of texting that doesn't use SMS messaging. It just uses the bandwidth. 
So it's a, it's a free way, effectively, to SMS people. And I just find a much richer conversation. It's much more fun to do. So that's Great. WhatsApp, W-H-A-T-S-A-P-P, -P, and Words and Chess with Friends. Those are three. Talk about lightning. Am I that fast? That is way faster than we are. You guys are slow pokes. One more uh, commercial, then. What should we do? We should do our final round, I think, because we've been going the on a lot. Final round. Final we'll round. Just, how about we just say the name of the product as quickly as possible? There you you could do that. You could say two or three if you have a bunch. Why don't you just go through your list? That's good. good. Idea. Okay, right. I'll prep those. Prep those. <laughs> Make it so, number four. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm number well, four? You're number I four. Like you're on I like that. You're on camera four, so I, I think of done. you as number four. He's, he's, he's the face man of the show. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't have enough squeeze box, Captain. <laughs> he's the uh, red shirt guy. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Go to Meeting. Go to Meeting is a great site, uh, great program, I should say, for people who are stuck having uh, phone call meetings. I mean, that really can really be the kiss of death. Go to Meeting from Citrix is based on the Citrix plat remote access platform, which makes it very easy to set up, very easy to use. And that's important, especially if you're using, uh, you know, this product to, for instance, pitch prospects. The last thing you want to do is say, you're going to have to jump through 80 hoops to see my presentation to, for you to buy something from me. Go to meeting is always welcome. It saves you a business trip, saves them having to, you know, wine and dine you. You get to work. You get to make, you close more deals. You can be more effective. Um, it's great for training, great for collaboration, as I said, great for sales. And I want you to try it free for 30 days. You go to gotomeeting.com slash, I typed the wrong URL there, MacBreak. Gotomeeting.com slash MacBreak is the URL. And uh, you, could, you can set this up literally in a minute, and then it's ready to go. And the next time you're on the phone going crazy, trying to describe something visual, you merely say, hey, look, go to gotomeeting.com. Here's the meeting ID. I would love to show you this. And they see your computer on their desktop in real time. They see the mouse pointer move. They see slides move. It's just incredible. Now they'll see what you're talking about. Go to meeting.com slash MacBreak. Please give it a try free for 30 days. I know you're going to love it. All right. Now, I guess it's, it's, it's kind of wrap up with a few of them. We're just, we're just throwing names out? Is that, is that the deal? Um, yeah, well, I, you know, if you have a... if Look, I know you, we, we prepared 10, and we've gotten to, what, three or four. So if you have a couple that you really don't want to let slide, go okay. right ahead. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Starting with you, Mr. Moynihan. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Internet. Uh, shoot, I got the wrong name for this thing. I really like this thing called Screenlit. Somebody Screenlit? Yeah. So um, if you if you are like a big nerd about like having access of, to screen sharing, it's usually kind of a pain to open that stuff up. Screenlet hangs up in your menu bar and you pull down and it just instantly pulls up anything that you have the credentials to go and log in to with the screen. Screenlet. Good. I think that's what it's called. Can anybody find it? Dane? Dane? Is it out there? Is Screenlet? I'm is that saying what it's org. Is that it? I want to say it's called Screenlet. Pretty sure that's right. Yeah. Na, 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 na. I think that's what it's called. I'll double check that. Screenshots. Let me show you some screenshots. See if this looks familiar. Yeah, it's on my other box. Upload your I own use screen. It, uh, no, this is an enhanced desktop. That's not it. Yeah. What? Check the chat room. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What am I talking about? That's called Screenlit. You know, I, I don't see the name of it. I just use it up in the thing. I'll sell Screenlit. Use it up in the thing. It's in the thing. Okay, with you the look thing. that up. I'll do one more. One it's more in the quickly. Thing. Yeah. Uh, has, have we done PaySpot? Are you guys it's doing? By the way, screen sharing menu lit. Is that it? That's probably it. That's Let me look it, it up. Screen yeah. sharing menu lit. Is this it? It is uh, from Claim. Claim. K L I E I M. Does it have a little like that? You know what? I'll find it and I'll post it. No, that's it. it. I uh, think that's it. Connect right, to local it's, it's computers fantastic. via screen sharing from the menu. Is that it? Totally, no. totally simple. It only does one thing. It's totally awesome. Uh, have you guys done PaySpot for iPhone? We already done that? No. Mention it. It's great. Okay. This must be used. This is a huge part of my workflow. One of the, now that we've got copy and paste, the thing that sucks on the iPhone is you don't really have multiple clipboards. If you're trying to do anything with blogging, you know, you don't want to have to do a lot of typing. Um, I, I'm still going to write this up. It's going to be a combination of my workflow that involves uh, Simple Note uh, along with Text Expander uh, and so on. The, the thing that's amazing is PasteBot, basically, I think it holds up to 99 buffers of, of, of pasting. That's amazing. So what happens is I, I keep it down on my dock. And every time I, I copy something I'm going to want to reuse, I ch hop into PasteBot. It automatically grabs it. I go somewhere else. I put other stuff in there. That's great. But then on top of it with PasteBot, you can go in and it's got a basic set of things you can do to whatever's in that clipboard. And again, there's multiple, multiple clipboards. You can go in. You can, I think you can take out HTML entities. You can quote stuff. Um, but then the real sexy, to me, this is on another level. There's an equivalent or there's a, um, a preference pane 
on your Macs, on your multiple Macs, that lets you send to and from your iPhone over your Wi-Fi using PasteBot. So if you just want to quickly send like a little chunk of text, it's as easy as just opening that application and hitting a button, it sends it over. I, I love applications like this that tie your desktop to your phone. Totally. Yeah. And, and these are the same guys that did ConvertBot and WaitBot. Uh, they, it is, I had no need for WaitBot. I had no need for ConvertBot. I just like the way it feels to use. And the little clicky noises and the transitions, they're exquisitely made. Um, I forget the name of the company, something bot. But um, yeah, tap, PasteBot. You've tap got, bots. got to get it on TapBots.com. Tap you your iPhone. It's fantastic. T-A-P-B-O-T-S dot com. Right. Any uh, any uh, final uh, thoughts, Alex? Lindsay, some quickies you want to uh, mention? Uh, I don't know if I've talked about this one before, but I, I just I've really gotten into using my little Ped Three. So this is by uh, Thought Out um, Products, I think, or Thought Out, and and it's just a little stand. It, it seems it seems simple. There it is. It's a little stand, and I use it all the time now. And I so great. What I mostly use it for is I'm watching like the news. If I want to watch streaming news, like I, I watch a lot of either CNN or Al Jazeera English, and um, well, what's that? I think somebody just drove off. Yeah, so, so um, and uh, if I want to have it just playing in the background, and, and now that there's actually streaming TV and stuff like that, it just works great. It's a it's, great iPod, it's, a, it's a great little uh, iPod stand, stand that you can stand it next to you and have it streaming stuff while you're doing it. So, uh, Ped, Solid steel, too. Ped 3, uh, and then also, I just want to... It's I, from thoughtout.biz. I want to recommend this this next one. It's not new, but it is going to be gone soon. People should. I mean, I, the rumor is is that the Canon HV40, which is the last FireWire camera that I know, last like FireWire camera that I know of, is uh, is kind of long in the tooth Yikes. and probably gone by June. And um, uh, that's the rumor mill. And I don't know of any other ones that are out there that are like HD, like great little consumer cameras. They're re they've all moved to USB. And why that's important to you is because there's no good way to catch up. I mean, right. to, to connect your camera, get a live feed out of it other than using the HDMI. Uh, and if you're going to use the HDMI, the cheapest way to do that is a Blackmagic intensity card. Um, and uh, that will get you uncompressed if you're shooting green screen. So those are three all tied together. Really Very quick. good. Very nice. Very well done. Uh, Andy Nako, any uh, ones you don't want to leave out? You're... Well, for my last one, I guess I want to go to my pick of all picks, uh, which is the Scrivener word processor. Yes, baby. Uh, totally changed. The, I mean, I'm a professional writer, and it totally changed the way that, not only that I write, but the way that I do my business. That it's the only, it's the most modern word processor I've ever seen. It's completely free of gimmicks. The only features that are in it are ones that can save you time, organize your thoughts, and help you get to the end of the project uh, faster. Uh, I mean, the more I use it, the more ambitious I get with it. I'm right in the middle of a project right now that started off with, hey, wouldn't it be a cool idea to try this? all the way to sort of getting lots of little random notes together to organize them into a form, to creating like a 50-page story Bible, to creating a 30-page additional project Bible for all the people who are going to be working on this project. And now we get into the nitty-gritty of actually turning this into a working, uh, observable, usable thing. Uh, and it's all, whereas uh, even just a year ago with Scrivener, I might have used Omni Outliner for parts of it, another note-taking tool for other parts of it. Now I just realized that it's just so easy to do it all with Within Scrivener, and no matter how complicated the the project is, no matter how how many chapters there are, it's all in one document, all in one binder that can easily be copied, easily be put onto a flash drive, easy easily backed up to some place without fear that you lost the outline or you lost some some research PDFs or something. I just, you know, if right right now the only thing that could if the iPad ran Scrivener, there'd be a good chance I would not need a MacBook. That's how dependent I am on this wow. app. And it's just for it's just forty dollars, and I cannot praise this app enough. And anytime there's something I think it uh, that I think it can't do, or that I think I need to have another organizational tool or another writing tool in order to make it work, I realize that no, I just haven't looked at Scrivener hard enough. Uh, just I mean, just the other day, it was it was kind of funny because I didn't. There has uh, one of the things that first attracted me to it was the fact that you could simply, it, it allowed you to have a thermometer at the bottom of your document window. If you told it that the target for this mm -hmm. is 800 words, uh, then it'll just simply give you a thermometer that says how close you are to it. Uh, and so I, for the past two years, ever since I started testing it out with a view towards writing review, I've read, ev I've written and researched every single Sun-Times column uh, in Scrivener, all in the same uh, binder. Oh, yeah. And just for fun, I, I clicked out, I clicked one button and did the word count. I just realized that, wait a minute, I could just simply say, please do a word count of all the all the documents inside this project binder. Mm -hmm. and I realized I just surpassed something like uh, 150,000 or 200,000 words uh, of columns just in the past year, year and a half. This, it's 
I, I cannot be enthused. So I, I'm so enthusiastic about Scrivener that, you know, if there was a, if I ever thought about getting a tattoo, the first three would be very <laughs> personal, but the fourth would probably be Scrivener. <laughs> can, I, can I glom onto that, Andy, by adding a total nerd insider, nobody cares thing that changed my game with Scrivener? Yes. Um, Scrivener, first of all, it's like you could just you could learn this thing forever. You, like yeah. Pathfinder, like all these wonderful apps, you don't have to use everything in Scrivener. And until you really understand what you're doing, you might not want to use every single for, for, thing. But let me start for one second. Let me just say that for the sure. first year, I just used it as a word processor. I did not use any of its organizational tools. And then once I said, well, what happens if you click this? And then suddenly I see, wow, everything I've written for the past year and a year and a half is now nicely organized into cork boards and an outline. So, mm -hmm. Anyway, you can, and you, can zoom, you can zoom straight in. And when you talk about like word count, you see a word count for whatever's selected. So if you just want to see what are these three chapters, you can do that. A huge amount of power. Here's just, this is a nerd thing, but it's a huge nerd thing. I don't know about you. I write everything in Markdown. What, it doesn't matter what you write it in. Um, does, does, <laughs> when, when you say that to girls, do they... Oh yeah. yeah. Oh no, that, that it's it's pretty huge. Uh, I gotta get a snake. <laughs> Swipe them away. Uh, here's the neat thing. So in Scrivener, you can write however you want. You can write in HTML. You could write in mostly. Most people write in RTF. And this is a little hard to learn at first, but you can export as any format you want because um, right. it plays well with a lot of different formats. I do everything in Markdown. If I export an entire document from Scrivener as a multi, as a Markdown file, the, Fletcher Penny, who's the guy who did multi Markdown, he's very into XSLT. Try and follow this. You can round trip using Markdown. You can round Scrivener trip with Omni Outliner. Yes. So, so now, that means it writes the Markdown into Omni Outliner form, and then changes made in Omni Outliner come back in as Markdown. Let's say, let's say you're in Omni Outliner. There's already an Omni Outliner export for Markdown. So you put it out as Markdown. And you got a .md file or whatever. That .md file can now be imported into Scrivener or brought into TextMate or whatever. Um, but then the sexy part is there's an OPML plugin that Fletcher has written for, um, for um, Markdown, where it'll take your Markdown document and export it as an OPML, which, anyway, you see where this is going. This is, we're getting one step closer to total round trip. So if you think well in Omni Outliner or you organize well in Scrivener, you're no longer bound to one program. I'm not saying you should be this fiddly, but you're not stuck. You have a totally portable format. And then through stuff like XSLT and LaTeX, you can turn that into anything you want. Yeah. Fletcher's got that's, drag that's and drop for turning stuff into PDFs or whatever you want. It's, it's mind-blowing. That, that's, that's something I wish I had mentioned. This is, this, there's a feature that is so cool that it just it totally abstracts the idea of what you're writing to what the final result needs to be. So for instance, just for the Sun-Times, uh, it used to be that I'd have to create one version for, I, when, I, when I finished writing the column, I'd have to send a copy to one desk that does the web stuff and one desk that does the print edition because the editor who works on the print edition wants a text file that's marked up a certain way. The person who wants the web edition wants, to H, wants HTML. It used to be that I have to use like these custom tags that they'd have to sort out for themselves. Now with Scrivener, all I have to do is I simply have, uh, I, I burn each of them a separate copy of the exact same column formatted the way they want. I just simply go to a pop-up, say, please burn me a copy of this for the, it's literally called the Chicago Sun-Times web. It's it's burned to exactly the specifications that they want, including do you want smart quotes? Do you want dumb quotes? Do you want mm -hmm. HTML codes? Do you want RTF codes? All this sort of stuff. And then when, after I spit out that copy, I spit out a second copy with another se second custom set of set, uh, settings uh, for the print edition. It's, uh, again, this could be the, the Scrivener show, really. Yeah. Any, any we should do a Scrivener say, show at some it. point. Yeah. Scrivener Break Week. I bought Scrivener on your recommendation, and I'm still using it uh, barely as a word processor, so I really do need to understand it a little just right the word processor, it's a great forty dollar word processor. Yeah, yeah, but I, and, but the round tripping was very interesting to me. I, I don't know of anything that does that. That's very hard to do. So that's kind of intriguing. That's from uh, Literature and Lattes. .com. So the guy, the guy's a novelist. The guy's a writer, and he's one reason I totally respect the guy. One of many reasons is people are always saying like, "Sir, can it uh, run shell scripts uh, and make tea?" And he's like, "Nope, this is what it does." does yeah. this thing. It already does plenty. I'm not going to add a bunch of any more bloat to it. Right. It's got everything you need right here. You should go build your own app if you wanted to do more. <laughs> I, I love the auteur attitude. <laughs> yeah. He, by the way, also says, not going to do an iPad version. No. Yeah. No interest. But that's, well, but I, I don't mind because I'm sure that I could spit it out in a page, in pages format, edit right. it in pages, then spit it right. back in without any problems. I can't, I wonder how much people are going to be writing on an iPad. I'll, I'll really be curious to see how that works for you. 
It just seems uh, like it's that, going to be that's, tough. That's, that's the reason why I hackintoshed my netbook because right. uh, to, to me, the difference between a real computer and a travel computer is the ability to run Scrivener. And if you know, running under, in, in, the, in the case of that little HP, running under a very, very tiny storage footprint was the price of being able to run Mac OS and running Scrivener. That's good. I'll take it. Uh, one, a uh, couple of picks from the chat room. Wait a minute. Did you, wait a minute. Uh, Alex, did you do, you did your picks? I did, and, I did mine. I, I'm, I'm, Andy, have you done yours? You did Scrivener. Do you want to do any other ones you want to do? Um, I'll save it. For, I got one more that's good, but I'll save it for next week for my pick. This is, a, the chat room is saying that you should look at a, a new drawing program that he says is the best on the iPhone. And I'm going to give him a, a little chance to plug it. This is MCH Europe says, Art Studio, which just came out on the iPhone, um, is 25 brushes, simulated brush pressure, line smoothing, drawing modes, layers, uh, f six levels of undo, redo. It's even got built-in drawing lessons. It sounds like a very intriguing uh, iPhone app. So I'll, we'll take a look at that, and that might be uh, something that that we'll, uh, we'll be recommending in the future. So thank you, MCH uh, Europe. We got a lot of great recommendations out of the chat room, a lot of things they'd like to recommend i'm going to take a, talk about a couple of programs i just use all the time busy busy cal is one and it comes from you really merlin because you recommended the company that does it uh to sync with the google calendar i live in google and busy cal is now my complete iCal replacement because it's uh just so well integrated with the google calendar um it's just a really fantastic calendar application and they're constantly updating it and making it better we've got a segment i, I, I alex will eventually <laughs> put up a segment that i did with uh busy mac it, it they've added some nice little touches it's just if you on the face of it, it looks like iCal, but it's like, it's what do no I need another iCal for? I got, I already got Alec iCal, no. but it's subtle. There's so many nice little touches to it. Subtle, it's really yeah, I really, I really enjoy it. Uh, another one that we I use all the time is called Pucka. We've it was a recommendation a while ago, it, from Code Sorcery Workshop. You might say, why would I pay for a tool to help me bookmark files on Delicious? Well, if you use Safari, I make uh, Pucka be my. Um, you can see, in fact, if you look at my Safari, I, it's uh, it's the first bookmark. And uh, that means that all I have to do is command one on any page, and uh, and I immediately uh, puck up runs and and launches a little uh, a little uh, bookmark to delicious. We use too much so much delicious bookmarking on the show. This is easily the easiest way. There is one uh, you know free one for Firefox and so forth, but Pucka is spectacular. And I'm just I'm mentioning stuff that I use all the time. And those are a couple of programs I just use all the time and worth 17 bucks to me. Uh, hey everybody, this was a lot of fun. There wasn't that much Mac news. We can couple a couple of couple of stories. Apple's banning five thousand sexy apps from the uh, <laughs> iTunes bye, bye. app store. About time. Yeah. Uh, didn't bother me. Did it bother you? It, it, it bothered me when they were there. I mean, because it, it was turning. It was just you turning bothered iTunes me? into a trash. You know, it was just the problem was is that you'd go to every area of of the apps in the in the app store, and you'd see all these stupid things. It was like it was like when YouTube became that thing where they'd put up kind of a racy girl and it was just a picture you know and they were just trying to yeah. get numbers or whatever yeah. okay. and it was just so it just it was that whole thing that youtube ended up redesigning what they did to push that all back and and apple needed to do something too because otherwise it was going to be the front page of every app right area uh, yeah i think that's probably like why they virus did. My, my problem was that they were not approving some really great useful programs and they were allowing this junk right. through and it was like well if you're going to censor then censor if you're not going to censor okay right Mm -hmm. But if you're going to censor, censor, like at least tell us what the rules are. Right. You know, it's just uh, consistently. That's that's right. the only thing. Apple also depends so heavily on first impressions that they probably don't want somebody coming in and doing a search and having a bunch of boobies show up. You know. Right. Yeah. It's, it's only if, if it were. Uh, it sounds like I'm joking here, but if it were a good sexy app, I'd be all for it. But sure. if it's just. I do, I do a search. Oh, geez, I need a good uh, Microsoft Word document viewer. Word document viewer. Oh, so it's the Nurse Boobies movie viewer. Oh, thank you very much. That has, that has everything to do with what I was looking for. You know what's Great weird, job. though, is they kept Playboy's app. Uh, they kept, yeah. you know, they kept the Sports Illustrated swimsuit app, ne neither of yeah. which are any different from the others that they banned. Maybe they're, maybe they're, they're the good contracts. Ones. Right. They're money. It's yeah. money, 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 money. Uh, boy, there's so many in the chat room. I really would like to mention... But uh, I guess we'll just have to collate those and uh, and put them. Maybe somewhere. we should uh, maybe and maybe not next week, but we should have one where uh, your picks. folks let people vote or whatever. You, you know what we'll do? do? We could easily do, and I would like to do this, and we'll take some production time. Is have people go somewhere uh, like we were using? Um, what were we using for a while? Um, Vidly. Mm -hmm. Have them go to vid.ly and, and record a pick. Yeah, and oh, uh, and then we could go through their picks. That would be really fun. Yeah. 
So we'll 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 save that for another day, but because uh, it's going to take some time going through all the picks that we'll get. But uh, yeah, that, we'll let that, you know when great. we're going to do that. I think we'd like to do that. That'd be a lot of fun. Merlin Man blogs at merlinman.com, and uh, you can go to merlinman.com slash uh, Mac picks to see what he did today. I'll type up my other ones too. I mean, it's kind of a haphazard job here, but I'll, I'll type up the other ones that I've got on my list uh, as well. Also, the great productivity blog is forty uh, three folders dot com. The number forty three folders dot com. Really a must for everybody. And he is uh, the, one of the hosts of You Look Nice Today, which is simply to put the funniest podcast on the That's internet. That's better than all that other stuff, actually. All that other stuff is just nonsense. If you look nice today, it's really I love it. Today. And you guys will, you know, if you wanted to be part of the morning show, you'd like to do a, you know, a regular appearance on it. That would be so much fun. We should, we should do a thing where we call prank call people and tell them somebody in their family died. That's, I always love that. <laughs> I love morning <laughs> shows because so they're always, they great. take it and they turn it. And they I think turn it. Save it for sweeps. Yeah, save it for sweeps week. Andy Yanako, <laughs> Chicago Sun-Times, and his website is cwob.com. Always great pleasure to have you on, sir. Thank you. Is for your being dog here. dressing too sexy? We'll have a veterinarian talking after this break. We're back. <laughs> Good morning. The man with the mug on Twitter. That's it. That's how they're going to know you. That's how they're going to know you. Yeah, this is an ongoing audition process. I know that you're going to be looking for the We're right chemistry, looking. that sort of thing. It's but, all about the chemistry and the mug. And you got the mug. I don't have a mug. Alex Lindsay does not have a mug, but he does have the Pixel Core at PixelCore.com, a great guild of multimedia artists learning and working in Do the business. Do you think our new, our new rollout, uh, is, it looks like it'll be next week? Oh, so uh, go to PixelCore.com to find out more next week. You, you, yeah, next week. It's cool. And PixelCore.tv is where all the podcasts are, and you find all of the PMA podcast. He was just back, he was back from the photo marketing show. They should start going up in the next couple of days. So you've got a lot of video of new cameras. Lots of new cameras, new features. We're talking about GPS and 3D. And I actually saw some great 3D on, on a TV. That's awesome. It was actually really and, and awesome. A le and a lens that was like the size of a <laughs> telescope. It was pretty nifty. <laughs> I'm Leo Laporte. We do thank you for being here. We hope you'll come back next time. We do this show live every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. our time, Pacific time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, and 1900 UTC if you want to watch at live.twit.com. Dot TV. And of course, you can get the podcast at twit.tv slash MBW. See you next time. Another Mac break. Broke.